YouTube, how are you guys doing? I'm back for another Apple Weekly with uh, Sore Throat. But hopefully in this video I'll just be going over all the latest stories or some of the stories that I found interesting in relation to Apple. So thanks for tuning in. One of the funniest stories coming out this week is Microsoft held a funeral for the iPhone and the Blackberries. Microsoft, of course, releasing their Windows Live or Windows 7 mobile phones later this year. Uh, and I guess it was just to say they are going to kill off the iPhone and pretty much be an iPhone killer, obviously referring to this new Windows phone. Surprisingly, Android uh, wasn't there. There was no Android funeral. There was no Android phone taken per um, pro the, the funeral process. There was Android wasn't mentioned or wasn't there. Only Blackberries and iPhones. But interestingly, the person who took photos at that event happened to, of course, be a Microsoft employee, and he was taking a picture from his HTC Evo. And you can see from that from your left-hand side, which is interesting. Does that mean, you know, Bomber and Eric Schmidt, you know, getting into bed together and, you know, doing some hunky-punky uh, or hunky-dory, shall I say? Very interesting to see what is going to happen with Windows 7. Of course, I, I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, what is Microsoft going to put to the table. And knowing how, you know, Microsoft work, uh, I have no, you know, expectations or I don't have any high hopes. I'm not excited for Microsoft. If they do well, hey, if they do well, I, you know, I'm not bothered with that. But knowing how Microsoft are, they, you know, they tend to like to hype things up, uh, but very little. I think Microsoft is only good for gaming, um, and they're probably good at Microsoft Word and the Office Suite in general. But that's about it. Um, they've left the mobile phone game for so long. Others in the market, you know, Android, Apple, of course, have sort of taken the lead. And for Microsoft to catch up, uh, it's going to take some time, and I don't think they can pull it off. And definitely... Um, I find this story funny, uh, and I don't think it's going to do any good to Microsoft, because they better hope uh, this is right, they better hope this works out, if not, then they are pretty much dead. The second topic is quite controversial, and definitely it was something that was in the spotlight a few weeks back. Apple, a few weeks back, they what they done was they pretty much put a halt to developers developing apps uh, using Adobe Flash, CS5, or other third-party applications, uh, and you know, Apple said anyone who's doing that is not going to be allowed in the App Store. However, this week, uh, they took that decision back, so now you can essentially, or developers can essentially go back to Adobe CS5, or what other application they use to develop their app. So they've relaxed them rules. God knows why. It'd be interesting. You know, but I'm thinking, and there's a lot of rumours saying, you know, developers weren't happy, this whole idea of Android coming into the market, and, you know, Android gaining momentum uh, in the mobile phone market. So it's probably just to put that to ease, also very interesting is now, you know, in the agreement that um, Apple signed up a few weeks back in this controversial area, uh, they pretty much shoved AdMob to a side and said, hey, we're bringing out our own iAds. So now they've said, okay, AdMob's back in legally. They've had it in writing. Uh, and both Adobe and Google have written blog posts and welcomed the changes. So very interesting to see why, uh, you know, this has happened. This is great news for developers. I can't talk too much about it because I'm not a developer myself, and there's sort of, you know there is mixed opinion as to who was right, who was wrong, why Apple done it, and why they didn't do it. I guess it was because Adobe wasn't really following the rules, or developers using other third-party applications weren't following the rules, putting in code that they shouldn't have. And definitely one of the things Apple has said is you can use it as long as the resulting apps don't download any code. And um, so it's going to be very interesting if you are a software developer, you know, please leave a comment and clear the. Um, the whole scenario up, you know, or do you welcome it, do you not, you know, I think the Google AdMobs possibly is quite interesting for developers because apparently iAds is very expensive to, there's a lot of rumours, a lot of stories on this, so uh, I think uh, the AdSense thing is very welcome for iOS developers and there's quite a few of you who watch this video, so you know, leave your comments below. This third story is probably one of the important ones and I have no idea why it's not right there at the top, number one or number two at least. It's in regards to FaceTime, uh, and there's two good news uh, according to these rumours, and it kind of makes sense. The first one is FaceTime is coming to OS X, uh, Snow Leopard, Leopard, uh, and Windows, surprisingly. And basically what that will allow you to do is, you know, you've got FaceTime on your iPod Touch 4th generation now, you've got FaceTime on your iPhone 4, uh, and you can, you know, do video conferencing. It's very good. And it's going to come through iChat on uh, the Mac platform. The thing is, I've never used iChat, you know, it's standard across all Macs, it's free obviously, uh, but I, I just tend to use Skype more because, I don't know, there was something about iChat that no one was really using and not many were on it, most of you guys were on Skype, or most of the people that I know were on Skype, 
Uh, and iChat really hasn't got a bump for a long time. It's just always just been there as a part of a package, and it's not referred to Apple in the media, uh, or at least not much. Uh, and you know, Mac Forever uh, is a French website who has pinpointed this. That it's, it's very very soon. Remember, this site Mac Forever uh, said that this iLife update will be with us in August, and it didn't happen. So credibility there is absolutely, you know, close to nothing. However, this is the same site that correctly predicted the 2009 iMac refresh, the quad-core processors, the Magic Mouse. So they do have credibility, but when it comes to iLife and their most recent rumour, it didn't go according to plan for them. And, um, you know, I've always said FaceTime on the Mac will be there, and a lot of you do agree with that. You know, what do you think? Is this something that you're going to be really looking forward to? I think it's a fantastic idea, and, you know, why is it not implemented sooner? So um, iLife in general, I've been waiting for this a long time. While I'm on the subject of iLife, iWeb update was released, I think it was 3.02, very, very recently. So I'm thinking, you know, iLife is probably not going to be here with us for a few months or at least a few weeks. Considering they just updated um, iWeb, why update iWeb when you're going to release a new iLife imminently or very soon? So two things conflicting there, welcoming for FaceTime uh, for the Mac and Windows machines. The second thing I want to talk to you about FaceTime is, New iPad, the next generation of iPad is going to have FaceTime. Uh, Apple Insider managed to get some inside information, hence the name Apple Insider. And uh, they've pretty much said that the next generation will be here with us well before the first quarter of 2011, or perhaps sooner. Uh, and if that sooner is meaning, the way I'm interpreting it is it's going to be before the holiday season, which is of course Christmas. And if that is the case, it will be good and kind of disappointing. Um, I, I say disappointing because... In the UK and everybody else, we got the iPads launched in end of April, beginning of May, and even then the stock really didn't, you know, ease out until a month uh, or a month and a half down the line, or even two months in some cases. So the people who got it late, uh, that was about, you know, July, June, July, even August, uh, and you know, to have a new product out just, you know, literally two or three months, the whole product life cycle hasn't gone by yet. A bit of a disappointment to say, um, you know, I would have obviously gone with the camera and so on. Do I think FaceTime is good on the iPad? Hell yeah, now that, you know, now that the iPod Touch and the iPad, the iPhone 4 is here, it makes sense to have, um, you know, a camera on the front. If the iPhone 4 didn't have a camera, a FaceTime feature, sorry, if the iPod Touches didn't have a FaceTime feature, then I would say it was kind of pointless, but now that these devices do have f FaceTime features, it makes sense to have a front-facing camera on the iPad to sort of, you know, have the same features across the road on the same devices to make the experience much more better. You know, what are your views on it? Is this something you're going to be looking forward to? If it does come out before December, are you going to get one? Uh, is that FaceTime really worth selling your current one or passing it on to someone else and getting the new iPad? Uh, and yeah, it goes without saying, because the iPad is a much larger screen, uh, the resolution of the front-facing camera on the iPad better be good. Uh, yeah, so leave your thoughts on this topic of FaceTime down below. This fourth topic is very interesting as well. It's on an iPad application, uh, and this application is called VLC Player, and most of you are probably familiar with it. It is one of the best applications for my Mac, uh, and I'm glad it's coming to your iPad, and for no other reason, because it can play DIVX formats, XVID formats, and a few people got their hands on it, appadvice.com, I believe, got their hands on it, and they said it was very, very smooth, it was very nice, although uh, there were some formats that didn't play well, um, and that's due to the power of um, the iPad. I'm taking because it's on the iPad, it's because it's on that device, because it's got 256 MB of RAM, uh, it's not able to process uh, those codecs or process that powerage that it requires. Um, but Wired got a hold of this application as well, Wired Magazine, you all know this. Uh, they got a hold of the VLC Player application for the iPad and they said it was great. It is the best video application they have touched on the iPad. Uh, and I, I think that's really, really good. Um, Wired is quite respectable and uh, it's good to sort of see from their angle. And definitely, uh, I will buy this app, no doubt, when it comes out because I have a lot of movies that are on that format. And it's obviously going to save me the hassle from converting it from, that, uh, from DIVX to Apple's own format. Uh, so one of those applications I would highly recommend, and I guess stay tuned, what are your thoughts on it? Maybe you've come across it, have you come across another application similar to this? Because I would be very interested in trying it out. But guys, what's your opinions on it? This next story is in regards to the free cases Apple were handing out to the iPhone 4 users. Regardless if you ha were having a problem or you weren't having a problem, they were dishing cases out anyway. 
However, come September the 30th, that will change because uh, this program will end uh, and you will no, uh, no longer be able to walk into a store and get a refund, a, a full refund. You'll still get the refund, but minus 10% of the restocking fees. Um, you won't be able to get a free bumper unless you really demonstrate it to one of the Genius Bar guys or Apple Care. So it's worthwhile if you don't know about this program, although I'm sure you do know about this program, thanks to the media. Um, if you haven't, for, for some odd reason, gone out and get a case, it's free anyway, so you might as well. You can either get a spec one, I think it was Belkin, Griffin, and the Apple bumpers. Uh, so I went for the spec when I got it in, and yeah, uh, it's great. So I just thought I'd just update you guys. Did you get a case? Which one did you get? You know, are you finding? Are you still having issues despite the case? Were you having an issue to start off with? Uh, leave a comment. This last topic is not controversial at all. It's about Foxconn. Yeah. Um, my hair is kind of camouflaging in the background there. Uh, apologies for that. But there's an article out on Bloomberg or Business Week. Uh, I highly recommend you go and reading. It's a very good read. It's basically about talking about the relationship between Foxconn and Apple, how good it is, the lengths to which Foxconn go in order to satisfy Apple and Steve Jobs. So much so that um, Foxconn is producing 137 iPhone 4s a day. That's about 90 a minute. And the machines that they're producing this on is insane because this machine, one machine, cost 20,000 US dollars. And this machine is only meant to create prototypes. It's very, very slow in producing this metal frame within the iPhone 4. It's not meant for mass production. So what do Foxconn go and do? They go out and buy loads of them. They bought, bought 1,000 worth of these machines. Uh, and obviously each machine costing $20,000. Do the math yourself, guys. Uh, they spent $20 million. Of course, Foxconn spent $20 million for Apple to produce the iPhone 4 on these prototype machines. And it's insane. Um, you know, they also noted in this article that, yes, Foxconn, the guy, uh, Terry Go, who's the CEO, admitted that he failed uh, in realising what happened with the suicides and he didn't really offer such a solution until it got really bad. But now, I mean, uh, you know, when they've done the tour, they've got cinemas, they've got swimming pools for employees. And I, d I don't, I can't really say what I think. I mean, I mean, all these programmes are great. But how well they are used, the hours that are being put in by these employees, there's a lot that goes in that we don't see. Of course, Foxconn invited the media and the press a few weeks back, and you know they were recording, showing them around the campus and so on. But that's a given; they weren't going to show the bad side anyway. So it's really down to the employees, you know, what they think, what's in their mind, what they're going through. Uh, and I thought I just I would just end it on that. So what are your thoughts on Foxconn? What are your thoughts on the iPhone four? I mean, go ahead and read the article. I'll leave it in the description. There was a lot more going on in the past week and new iPod Nanos, new iPod Shuffles, new iPod Touches and you probably already know about it. You've probably all seen my videos on the comparisons, the review and you haven't, uh, you know, click somewhere on the screen or check my previous videos out and you can go and view those videos directly. Uh, but yeah guys, I will be doing this uh, next week so look out for that video. Guys, thanks for watching. Remember you can join me on iGlassWeijin.com, Twitter.com slash i6LassWeijin, Facebook.com slash iGlassWeijin and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.